Right. I'm talking about the rules of regulations and the officials in rugby union. Uh, this is a basic pitch. The um, dimensions are a maximum of 140 by 70 meters, 144 by 70 meters. That's from the dead ball line to the dead ball line. So that's from here to here. Um, the it's split into like lots of sections that so goes from the goal line to 22, to the 10 meter, to the halfway line, and then to the 10 meter, to the 20 to the goal line again. Uh, the width is split to 5 meter, 15 meter, and then the, five meter, the 15 and the 5. Um, and that's just so that like for line outs and scrums and stuff, that's not where it's given. Uh, this is a basic standard match rule. Um, the length is between 28 and 30 centimetres and the circumference around the middle is 58 to 62 centimetres. Um, it's supposed to be leather or synthetic material for it to be allowed to be used in a match and it weighs between 410 and 460 grams. Rugby has 15 players on the pitch. Um, there has to be three front row that are, um, I've forgotten the word, experienced. <laughs> Um, and then they need to have at least one replacement. One is a team of 22, there's got to be three extra replacement front rows to um, cover all the pit up in case there's like a substitution. Um, if a player is injured, the play doesn't stop, it keeps going um, unless it's going to affect the player so that the player turns around back on the injured player. Um, no one's allowed to leave play with or get um, join play without the referee's knowledge, so if there's a substitution. The um, coach has got to make the referee aware of what's going on. Um, the way the pitch is sorted is there's eight front rows that are in the scrum, which is this one, and there's nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, and then eleven and fourteen in the wings, and fifteen to full back, and then there's the replacements. So normally these three would all be experienced front rows, so they can take on the role if the front row gets injured. Um, in rugby, they're quite specific about what you're allowed to wear. Um, everything, any equipment they use has got to be like approved by the IRB. So studs have got to be um, smooth metal or moulded rubber. So like these are specific for rugby, you can't just use normal mouldies because they've got the wrong shaped stud and also you can't just use normal football studs because they're not smoothed down. Um, men can wear padding like this and women can wear padding, padding like this. Women can wear that sort of special chest padding but men aren't allowed to wear that. Um, scrum caps and protection, like supports and stuff can be worn optionally but they have to be approved as well as like shin pads and the gloves. They're a um, choice thing. Um, gum shield is really recommended for me. In women's sport, it's actually compulsory. You can't play without gum shield. Um, if a rugby player has the two top studs missing from their boots, they're not allowed to play. They have to be um, replaced because otherwise it's illegal. Time is kept by the referee. Um, matches last 80 minutes, and it's split into two to 40 minute halves. Um, half time should last no more than 15 minutes. Um, the referee is the one that's in charge of time because they're the ones that decide when stop when play stopped and started. So it's like a more quick reaction so it keeps the game going a longer. Um, if there's like a high number of injuries, the referee will always stop play because you can't play with half the players in the um, In a match, there's one referee and two touch judges. And then in like Premiership Rugby and stuff, there's also the TV analysis, which is used in case the referees and the touch judges can't decide whether a try has been scored or whether um, the ball, it doesn't normally happen, but if it was like a forward pass or someone was deemed offside, it can be used for that. But in rugby, it's normally just to analyse tries and conversions. But it's, un it's unlikely that you need to analyse a conversion because the touch judges are on either post, so they um, can see what's going on. Um, 
this is what a touch dodge would normally be dressed like. They have a flag. Only touches have flags. No other officials do. Um, mode of play is set into phases. So the match is starting with a kickoff. Um, after the kickoff, any player who's on the side can take the ball and run with it. Any player may throw or kick the ball. Any player may give. Any player can give the ball to another player. Any player can tackle, hold, or push an opponent holding the ball. And any player, any player may fall on the ball. Any player can take part in a scrum, ruck, maul, or line out. Um, apart from obviously in the front row, because they've got to be experienced. Um, anyone can take the ball into the ground on the goal line. And any player can hand off an opponent. Um, but whatever the player does must be in accordance with the rules and, and the laws of the game. So you can't like, punch someone in the face or do anything that's unlawful. Uh, this is the signal for advantage. Advantage is a method of acknowledging an error but trying to keep the game going. And in rugby it's used quite a lot because otherwise it would be a lot of stopping and starting because a lot of errors do happen in the game. Um, when the referee has decided the team has benefited or not benefited enough from the advantage, they will call whether it's over or if no advantage is coming, and this will decide what's happening next. If no advantage is seen or another error is made, play will stop and a scrum or penalty is normally the sanction. Um, and if advantage um, is over, then play will carry on as normal. So it just stops play getting broken down and it keeps things flowing more. Um, scoring is when a try is grounded over the opposition's try line and it's a five point score. A penalty try is if a player probably would have scored if the try uh, scored a try if the opposition hadn't infringed. So like if they hadn't done something illegal like a high tackle or so a lot of scrums often if they're near on the five metre line then um, they quite often lead to penalty tries because the opposition will keep trying to break down the scrum so they don't get advantage. And if it goes on for like three or four scrums, it normally leads to a penalty try. And that's also given as um, five points. A conversion is when the ball is drop kicked or kicked off the tee through the posts. This only happens when a try has been scored. And that's two points. A dropped goal and a penalty goal are both worth three points. A drop goal is when uh, an attacking player drop kicks the ball through the post. And a penalty goal is when the attacking team have been given an advantage, play stopped and they um, drop kick or kick off the tee. And it's, it has to go through the post for 10 points. Um, foul play comes in quite a few forms. The first one's obstruction. Okay, so blocking when the team make moves or stand in front of the ball. Um, preventing the defence tackling. So like originally in this photo, this player was stood up in front of that player and then they like crossed each other, meaning that no one could tackle the player with the ball because they can't get there. Um, and it can also be when a teammate runs in front of the ball, stopping the ball carrier from getting into contact. The ball carrier must not run into a teammate um, when they're in a position uh, when the they are in possession of the ball, so that's called crossing. So when they collide, blocking each other. Um, all of these infringements lead to a penalty kick or a penalty try in some cases. So, for example, if the blocking happened, um, it would lead to a penalty try because if that person wasn't blocking, they would have scored a try anyway. Um, Unfair, unfair play basically comes in the forms of time wasting, which is given if, if, as a free kick. Throwing the ball into touch, which is illegal because um, it's intentionally gone out of play, stopping play. Um, and also if you throw it over the dead ball line, it will also lead to a penalty because it's intentional. Um, any intentional infringing is when any law or rule is broken on purpose, depending on the severity, it could lead to a penalty kick. The player should be cautioned or potentially be sent off temporarily. If the infringement stops the try, then it will go and lead to a penalty try. Um, if a player repeatedly infringes, 
a penalty kick will be given and the player should temporarily be sent off depending on the severity of an action that should be further taken. Uh, this is the signal for offside. A player is offside when they're in front of the ball carrier, basically, or if they're in front of the ball position. Um, if a player interferes with play, if they move towards or forwards the ball, fail to comply with the 10-metre law, or catch the ball from a kick when they start off the head of the kicking player, they are deemed offside. But there's quite a few ways to put players back on side. Your own teammates can put you back on side by um, the kicking player advancing past the offside player, so they've got to run past them so they're not automatically back on side. Um, if the offside player makes an um, obvious retreat, so they'll get back on themselves. Um, if another player who was on side receives the ball to gain possession, the offside player will automatically put on side again. And the opposition can put a player back on side by catching the ball and running five metres with the ball, kicking the ball, or intentionally touching the ball. So even if they try and go for the ball but miss it, that um, as long as they've touched it, the player will be back on side. Um, a knock on is when the ball's gone forward. Um, unintentional knock ons in open play lead to scrums, and this is when the A pack make a 16 and they attack each other to get the ball. Um, an unintentional knock on the line out will lead to a 15 metre scrum, and this is just the 15 metre scrum means they've gone 15 metres back into the pitch so they're not as close to the touch line, so play can carry on once the scrum's on the one off. Um, an unintentional knock on across the goal line will lead to the ball being made dead, and a scrum will, have, a scrum will be awarded to the defensive team. Um, it's a five metre scrum. An intentional knock on will be penalised because it's unfair foul play, and um, a penalty will be a sanction. If the ball is on the ground but no tackle has been made, for example, a kick off, the player has gone for the ball, gone across the ground and received it, um, the player must get up with the ball, release the ball, or pass the ball. No, other, no player can lie on over or near the ball, they can't block it from anybody else. Um, no player on the ground may try and tackle another player. Um, any of these infringements will lead to a penalty kick. If a tackle player is on the floor with the possession of the ball, they must get up with the ball if not held, release the ball or pass the ball. Um, and also if they're in reach of the goal line, they can attempt in one movement to score a try. Um, and if they have the momentum across the goal line, they can also score a try. They must not lie, in, lie on or over the ball, preventing anyone gaining possession of the ball, or hold on to the ball once they've been grounded, and a sanction is a penalty. The tackler and the tackle player must release the player, get up, move away from the tackle player and the ball. Um, and also, before they want to play the ball, they've got to get up as well. If they don't do any of these, then the penalty will also be given. And other players around the tackle area must be on their feet to play the ball and may not prevent any other player from being able to move away. Um, Rucks and walls are basically a way of gaining possession when you're in defence and also maintaining possession when you've been tackled. Um, the main rule is that they must, a player must go into a rock and wall with their head above their waist so that um, they're in a safe position. Um, binding must with the whole arm and not just the hand because um, then it's not classed as full binding um, and they won't be deemed in the rock or wall. Players must stay on their feet and always try to maintain being on their feet because if they go to the, if they go off their feet, it's dangerous and it can lead to injury. Um, no one can intentionally collapse the rock or wall, as this will be deemed as foul play, and no one may jump on top of the rock or wall. Um, when bound to the rock, players can't handle the wall because they are deemed as being in the rock, and the referee will shout their hands. Um, Offside line at the back of the rock is the back foot. 
and this is the foot of the last person bound into the rock. And if anyone wants to go through the wall, they must come from that direction. Um, a line out is when the ball's left play from the sideline across um, the touchline, um, and a line out as a result. It will be given against the team that sent the ball out. Um, in most cases, except when the ball is kicked directly into touch from a penalty kick, the ball um, will be given to the defensive team. Um, Lineups can be taken in the form of a quick throw in. This is when the ball is thrown from the sideline in. No one else can have touched the ball from when it went into touch to when the person throws it in quickly. If anyone else has touched the ball or it's a different ball, it's not allowed, you can't do it. Um, the ball has to go backwards or straight. And this is just a way of speeding up play. And if the ball has been kicked into your own 22 and all the other opposition are in their 22, it's a good way to get play going and get up in the faces again. Um, and the thrower must throw the ball from where the ball went into, from where the ball went into touch. This is so that no unnecessary advantage can be given. Um, uh, the line out is taken from the five metre line, and the fly half must be ten metres from the out, uh, from the line out for it to be legal play. Um, there should be eight people in a scrum, or there, there can be less for certain reasons. For example, a forward has to be sent off, but the front row must be experienced. If not, then they can't contest a scrum, which means that. The attacking team will great with gain possession from an uncontested scrum. Um, there also must always be two second row players, but the loose forwards, so like the back line, they don't all have to be there. The um, players must all be correctly bound to avoid collapsing the scrum, and players can't put each other down. The call for formation, formation is crouch touch step. This is quite a new thing, it used to be crouch touch, pause engage, but new laws that came in this year have set, changed it. Um, the hooker must hook the ball once the ball has been fed into the scrum, um, and this is when the, opposite, when the teams can start driving the scrum, so they can't drive early, because then if the ball's not in, they're driving against, and it's an unfair advantage, and you can cause injury. Um, if the scrum lifts or collapses, the putting in team remain in possession and the scrum will be reset. Um, any infringement done within the scrum will lead to a penalty kick, unless it's going to stop, so if, unless it like stop a try scoring opportunity, then it can lead to a penalty try. Once the ball is in the scrum, both teams compete and drive across the ball, and this is to gain possession. Um, at a scrum, the fly half must be five metres back from it. Um, a referee has 46 signals in a game, so obviously it's quite a lot to remember, but only about seven of them are commonly used, so like a knock on try, scrum, advantage, penalty, um, time are the most common calls, um, but there are also many calls for like physiotherapists and doctors and refer um, assistant referees to come over and help with decisions and stuff. Um, there's also three signals for the touch judges and these are for a lot of the position of the line-out and the direction of the line-out, foul play and also for a conversion.